welcome to this course on introduction to marketing essentials now we will talk about module 45 so as you can see from this slide that module 43 44 and 45 are dedicated to understanding retailing and wholesaling and this is the part 3 and module 45 of uh, retailing and wholesaling so in this module we will explain the key changes defining the modern retail environment Understanding and describing how companies manage omni-channel retailing and explain the key principles in building and managing private labels. Now let us look at what is this modern retail environment. So retailing include all activities involved in selling goods or services directly to final consumers for their personal and non-business use. So these are the two characteristics of retailing. A retailer or retail store is any business enterprise whose sales volumes comes primarily from retailing. Any organization selling to final consumers, no matter whether it is a manufacturer, a wholesaler or a, or a retailer is doing retailing. It also does not matter how the goods or services are sold, in person, by mail, by telephone, by vending machines or online or where in the store, on the street or in the consumer's home. So it does not matter where and how these uh, things are sold. The retail marketing environment is dramatically different today from what it was just a decade ago. The retail market is very dynamic and a number of new types of competitors and competition have emerged over recent years. So this Lots of changes are happening in the retail market and how goods and services are retailed. So let us look at new retail forms and combinations. To better satisfy customers need for convenience, a variety of new retail forms have emerged. So we are looking at the need for convenience. Book store features, coffee shops, gas station include food uh, stores. Loblaws supermarkets have fitness clubs. Grocery stores such as Whole Food and Kroger's are adding bars to their location. Retailers are also experimenting with pop-up stores that let them promote brands to seasonal shoppers for a few weeks in busy areas. Pop-up stores are designed to create buzz, often through interactive experience. So this, this is the whole objective of these pop-up stores. Next is the retailer consolidation. Through their superior information systems, logistic systems and buying power, giant retailers such as Walmart are able to deliver good services and immense volumes of product to masses of consumers at appealing prices. They are crowding out small manufacturers that cannot deliver enough quantity and they often dedicate the most powerful ones what to make, how to price and promote it and when to when and how to ship and even how to improve production and management. Without these accounts, manufacturers could lose a significant portion of their sales. Because consolidated retailers have power over manufacturers, they tend to charge a variety of allowances fees for listing, stocking and promoting new brands. Another change that is happening in retail environment is the growth of mobile retailing. So consumers are fundamentally changing the way they shop. So that is the basic issue. Increasingly using a cell phone to text a friend or relative about a product while shopping in stores. Over 50% of all Google searches are done on mobile phones. In some part of the world, M-commerce is well established. Asian consumers use their mobile phone as their main computers and benefits from a well-developed mobile infrastructure. So mobile ads are accepted by consumers and inexpensive for phones. Interactive. Lifelong store aisles provide a wide range of products and brand images superimposed on the walls. Consumers could now order product for home delivery by simply snapping photos with their phones. Another thing that is happening is the growth of omni-channel retailing. Retailing has evolved from a purely brick and mortar format to a scenario in which retailers have augmented their physical locations with online stores designed to cater to consumers who prefer shopping online. So now the retailers, the brick and mortar retailers, they are opening online stores to cater to the consumers who prefer shopping online. So 
In this physical plus online format, brick and mortar stores and online stores perform the same functions with online sales partially cannibalizing the sales in the physical stores. Now, realizing the potential inefficiencies in managing two independent distribution channels, many retailers have moved to an omni-channel model in which physical locations complement one another rather than competing with each other. Another thing that is happening is the growth of fast retailing, an important trend in fashion retailing in particular, but with broader implications as well, is the emergence of fast retailing. So, this fast retailing is coming up. Here, retailers develop completely different supply chain and distribution systems in order to offer consumers constantly changing product choices. So, they are constantly changing the product choices and uh, giving it to the customers. So, that is called as fast retailing. So, consumers have been attracted to fast fashion retailers such as H&M, Zara, Uniqlo, Topshop and Forever 21 because of the novelty, value and fashion sense of their offerings and have made these retailers successful. Then comes the increasing role of technology. So, technology is profoundly affecting the ways retailers conduct nearly every facet of their business. These retailers now use technology to produce forecast, control inventory cost and orders for suppliers, reducing the need to discount and run sales to clear out languishing products. Technology is also directly affecting the consumer's shopping experience inside the store. Electronic shelf labeling allows retailers to change price levels instantaneously. So, electronic shelf labeling. In store programming can run continual demonstrations or promotional messages. Retailers are experimenting with virtual shopping screens, audio video presentations and QR code integration. They are also developing fully integrated digital communication strategies with well-designed websites, emails, search strategies and social media campaigns. Social media are especially important for retailers during the holiday seasons when shoppers are seeking information and sharing successes. Another important trend that is ha happening in modern retail environment is the decline of middle market retailers. The retail market today is hourglass glass shaped. Growth seems to be centered on the top with luxury offerings from retailers like Tiffany and Nyman Marcus and at the bottom with discount pricing from retailers such as Walmart and Dollar General. So, it is like, so our, our graph is something like this. So, either things are happening at the top or at the bottom. As discount retailers have improved their quality and image, consumers have been willing to trade down. Now, we will understand and manage omnichannel retailing. So, based on target market analysis, retailers must decide which channel to employ to reach their customers. Increasingly, the answer is multiple channel. So, there is no one channel to reach my target. Staple sells through its traditional retail brick and mortar channels, its own website that is staples.com, virtual malls, thousands of links on affiliated sites. This increased reliance on multiple channels means that channels should be designed to work together efficiently. The increased reliance on multiple channels means that the channels should be designed to work together effectively. So, all these channels should be should work together effectively. We can distinguish among brick and mortar retailers. Online retailers that have ventured into e commerce without a physical retail location, omni channel brick and click companies that have both physical and online presence. We discuss these three types of retailers in the next slides. So, now we will start understanding brick and mortar retailers. Perhaps the best known type of brick and mortar retailer is the department store. Japanese department stores such as Takashimaya and Mitsu Koshi attract millions of shoppers every year and feature art galleries, restaurants, cooking classes, fitness clubs and children playgrounds. The most common type of brick and mortar retailers are summarized as follows. The first is the department store such as JC Penning and Bloomingdale's carry several product lines. Specialty stores such as the Limited, the Body Shop and Sephora carry a single product line or a few related product lines. The second is supermarkets. 
such as big bazaars dmart and reliance fresh are large low cost low margin high value self service stores designed to meet a family's total need for food and household products so they are large low cost low margin low volume self service stores next are the convenience stores such as 711 circle k and 247 are small stores in residential areas often open 24 by 7 carrying a limited line of high turnover convenience products the third are mass merchandisers such as walmart and target are low price low margin high volume stores that sells routinely purchase food and household items plus services like laundry shoe repair dry cleaning and check cashing drug stores are the fourth one such as cvs pharmacy and walgreens carry prescription drugs health and beauty aid and other personal care small durable and miscellaneous items then comes category killers such as the home depot staples pet smart carry a narrow but deep assortment of one category extreme value or high discount stores are the six ones such as ld little dollar general and family dollar carry a very limited merchandise mix offered at highly discounted prices the seventh are off price retailers such as tj max and factory outlets offers leftover goods overruns irregular merchandise sold at less than the retail price then comes warehouse clubs such as cotsco sams club and bj offers larger quantities mega packs at low prices the ninth ones are automatic vending offer a variety of merchandise including impulse goods such as soft drinks coffee candy newspapers and magazines so these soft uh, automatic vending machines can be used to uh, to to retail soft drinks coffee candy newspapers and the magazines the three keys of retail success are often said to be location location and location retailers can replace their stores in central business district regional shopping centers community shopping centers a location within a larger store or a stand alone store so these are the various options that are available so department store chains oil companies and fast food franchises exercise great care in selecting regions of the country in which to open their outlets they are selecting particular cities and then particular sites within those cities in view of the relationship between high traffic and high rent high traffic and high rent so higher the traffic higher will be the rent retailers must determine the most advantageous location for their outlet using traffic counts survey of consumer shopping habits and analysis of competitive locations now let us look at the online retailers online retail sales have exploded and it is easy to see why online retailers can predictably provide convenient informative and personalized experiences for vastly different types of consumers and businesses by saving the cost of retail floor space staff and inventory they can also profitably sell low volume products to niche markets to drive traffic to the site many firms employ affiliate marketing paying online content providers to drive business to their brand sites consumers often go online to try and find lower prices but online retailer in fact compete on multiple dimensions they compete on product assortment convenience shopping experience speed of delivery return policies ability to address problem as and when they occur consumer survey suggests that the most significant inhibitor of online shopping are absence of pleasure experiences one social interactions two physical consultation with a company's representative three so these are the three problems with online uh, shopping ensuring security and privacy online concerns are still important although business to consumer websites have attracted much attention in the media even more activity is being conducted on business to business sites which are changing the supplier customer relationships in profound ways so till now we were talking about business to consumers now we are talking about business to business sites so business to business sites make market more efficient giving buyers easy access to a great deal of information from a variety of sources including suppliers websites intermediaries 
third party that add value by aggregating information about alternatives, market makers, third parties that link buyers and sellers, consumer communities where buyers can swap stories about suppliers, products and services. Firms such as Alibaba, the largest of the business to business market maker are using businesses, business to business auction sites, spot exchanges are using business to business auction sites, spot exchanges, online product catalogs, barter sites and other online resources to obtain better prices. The effect of these business to business mechanism is to make prices more transparent. So that is the main objective. For undifferentiated products, price pressures will increase. For highly differentiated products, buyers will gain a better picture of the item's true value. So that is the problem in these two situations. Although many brick and mortar companies often hesitate to open an e-commerce channel for fear of conflict with their channel partners, most have added the internet after seeing how much business is generated online. Even Procter & Gamble which used to be a traditional physical channel of distribution exclusively for years is selling some big brands such as Tide, Pampers and Ole online via its PNG e-store in part to be able to examine consumer shopping habits more closely. So that is another advantage of online selling that the manufacturers they can examine consumer shopping habits more closely. In addition to combined brick and mortar and online retailers, omnichannel retail retailers include non-store retailers that have extended their reach to include online retailing in their portfolios. One example of such multi-channel retailing includes direct mail marketing, catalog marketing, telemarketing and infomercial direct response marketing. Most of these companies have added e-commerce as another channel to connect with customers and generate sales. The transition to omnichannel retailing was greatly facilitated by the COVID pandemic when many brick and mortar only retailers found their sales revenues quickly evaporating as their consumers became increasingly cautious of in-person shopping. So people did not want to go inside the stores. Government regulations on business operations exacerbated the situation by further restricting consumer access to retail store. So, this dramatic change in the dynamics of shopping behavior forced many retailers to re-evaluate their business models and embrace e-commerce as integral uh, aspect of their operations. Now, let us look at how to manage private labels. A private label, also called as a reseller store or, or in-house brand is a proprietary brand that retailers and wholesalers develop. So they, these brands are developed by retailers and wholesalers. Benetton, The Body Shop, Marks & Spencers carry mostly owned merchandise. In grocery stores in Europe and Canada, store brands account for as much as 40% of the items sold and retained, roughly half of what Sainsbury and Tesco, the largest food, food chain, sell is store label goods. Germany and Spain are also European markets with a high percentage of private label sales. For many manufacturers, retailers are both collaborators and competitors. According to the Private Label Manufacturing Association, store brand now account for one of every five items sold in US supermarket drug chains and mass merchandisers. In one study, seven of the out of ten shoppers believed the private label products they bought were as good as, if not better than their national level brand competitors and virtually every household purchases private level brands from time to time. So why do retailers sponsor their own brands? First, these brands can be more profitable. Retailers may be able to use manufacturer with excess capacity that will produce private level goods at the low cost. So that is one point. Other costs such as research and development, advertising, sales promotion and physical distribution are also much lower. So private labels can generate a higher profit margin and retailers also develop exclusive store brands to differentiate themselves from the competitors. Retailers are building better quality in their store brands and emphasizing attractive innovative packaging 
supermarket retailers are adding premium store brand items when kroger's switched to new vendor to supply high quality cheeses meats and veggies for its upscale private label pizza sales increased the supermarket chain now owns 60% of the premium pizza market in its stores one of the most successful supermarket retailers with private label is canada's loblaws researchers offer four strategic recommendations for manufacturers to compete against or collaborate with the private labels the first is that they need to fight selectively when manufacturers can win against private labels and add value for the consumers retailers and shareholders but this typically offers when the brand is number 1 or 2 in the category or offers a premium niche position the second is to partner effectively by seeking win win relationship with retailers through strategies that complement the retailers private labels st lauder created four brands exclusively for calls to help the retailer generate volume and protect the prestigious brands in the process the third is to innovate brilliantly with new products to beat private labels continuous launching incremental new products keeps the manufacturer's brand look fresh the firm must also launch radically new products and protect the intellectual properties of all brands the fourth is creating winning value proposition by imbibing brands with symbolic imageries as well as functional quality that beats the private labels symbolic imagery and functional quality that beats the private label too many manufacturers brand have let private labels equal them and sometimes better them on functional quality in addition to have a winning value proposition marketers need to monitor pricing and ensure that perceived benefits equal the price premium creating a strong consumer demand is crucial so when walmart decided to pull hefty and glad food bags from its shelves selling just ziploc and its own great value brand hefty and glad stood to lose because the retail giant accounted for a third of their sales so that was the their problem when consumers complained about the loss of these and other brands and switched some of their shopping to other stores walmart relented and put hefties and glad back on their shelf so in order to conclude this module covered the modern retail environment and the new types of competitors and competitions that have emerged in recent years then we discussed the what omnichannel retailing is and how to manage it effectively along with different types of retailers in the omni channel finally we ended this module with a discussion on how to manage private labels in today's retail environment and these are the three books from which the material for this module was taken thank you